Oil falling almost 3% today as the Biden administration tries to pin the blame for record oil and gas prices on big oil. The president saying in letters to the energy companies that historically high refinery profit margins being passed directly onto American families are not acceptable. Let's bring in Paul Sankey of Sankey Research. He joined us on the Fast Line. Paul, um, the administration this afternoon went as far as to say that it is the company's patriotic duty to increase supplies and cut consumer costs. Is there a political risk to this group that should be priced into the stocks at this point? Uh, yeah, I think it's being priced in. I mean, there's just so much uncertainty with all this nonsense. If you saw the ExxonMobil letter in response, they literally might as well have, have, have written, you know, whatever. Because obviously now calling for more refining throughput is ridiculous when margins are as high as they are. You know, the companies are obviously going to be producing as much as they possibly can. Hey, Paul, it's Steve Grasso. Lo love your work. It seems like this is a bunch of uh, smoke and mirrors for me when we're looking at Biden and big oil and Russia and Ukraine. Oh, those, are, those are the elephants in the room. Where does Iran fit into this with the no nuclear deal, nuclear deal, enriching uranium, uh, exporting more barrels than they were under Trump? It seems like they're a bit of a canary in the coal mine. What does it mean for the space? Well, I think that, yes, as you say, there's more Iranian barrels on the market because essentially the Biden administration is not pursuing Iran not to export. You know, they're sort of quietly letting them export more oil. And this gives rise to, actually, it's kind of the answer to the last time I was on, and I didn't really answer Tim, which is to say there's no spare capacity really in global oil supply either. Uh, we had the, the Secretary General of OPEC the other day saying he thinks there's 2% spare capacity, which with China out is effectively zero. So Iran is more in the market than you might think. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a marginal thing that's probably not going to make much difference, even if the Iranians begin to get their act together. Hey, Paul, it's Tim. So I, 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 we don't have time to do this. I'll make a statement, then ask a question. But I, how about the Biden energy policy as being really that laid the foundation for this? And then, yeah, Russia and dynamics, those are the spark. But we went into this with $85 oil, and that was, uh, you know, up 30 percent on his watch. My question is more uh, bottom up related to companies and, and some of the M&A we're starting to see. Talk about that underpinning uh, companies you think might be ripe for some type of a takeout uh, M&A. And again, the Continental deal yesterday wasn't a big surprise, but it was exciting. Yeah, and what you're seeing here is a big arbitrage between the public valuations, that is to say the equity prices of these companies, compared to private valuations. And that's why Continental has taken itself private. So we can see that happening. I mean, at the moment, the public pressure on these companies just, you know, doesn't make sense compared to the amount of profit that they're making for no really reason of any nefarious good behavior. So ultimately, we could see a lot more take private. Some of the other names would be a coffee bill refining. You know, I think we're very interested in Chesapeake with a lot of resource. There's a few names out there. And of course, Buffett getting into Oxy could keep going. So that's another one which comes up on the radar further to your question. Paul, thanks for your thoughts. Good to talk thanks to you. So much. Paul Sankey, Sankey Research. Guy, you had mentioned if there's a pullback in oil stocks, you'd get in there. So what's top on your list? Yeah, the OIH and specifically names like Schlumberger and Halliburton, but some of these levered names as well. PSX is at the top of that list. It makes perfect sense. And again, I mean, everybody's hit the nail on the head. Demonizing energy companies might be politically expedient, but it doesn't make a whole hell of a lot of sense. And nor does releasing energy crude from the SPR make a whole hell of a lot of sense. The fundamentals are such that oil's going higher. There are going to be some speed bumps along the way. This is one of them. But I think a month from now, we're going to be talking about $130 crude and OIH north of 300 again.